there was a blackout in the entire town, no electricity. We are dressed in some overalls. Then we had one of us who was like a supervisor for us to gain a very easy access to the residence where we were going. The one who was like our supervisor by then, in fact, he was the ringleader, had a personal file. The file was left there. And that is exactly what led the police who were investigating the case to arrest us. I really regret. Because for one, it wasn't a good act anyway. And nobody, I believe that nobody would support such an act. Mutoto alikosa, aliuwa kama ni kuwa aliuwa, na mungu hame musamehe, na hame opa musamehe. You have been released. I felt like, it's like I had got some relief. Just like Alifanya Banayangu president. Please, our Kumbuke Wariamba Wakondani. In their 20s, they were young and wild. In his late 50s, and the only survivor of a crime they committed almost 30 years ago, life has not been the same for Joseph Charles Kinyua. July 1988, an Asian family in Nakuru County is planning to go to work. Chandra Khan Karamesh Gada was leaving for his wholesale shop located in the central business district, leaving behind his wife, Rina Shah, and a relative. Unknown to Chandra Khan, a gang of four people had done their homework for some time. Joseph Charles Kinyua, James Kinyanjui, Paul Kamau Njoroge and John Masharia Kamau had come up with a plan to stage a daring robbery at the home of the businessman. The four first boat overalls, complete with the Kenya Power and Lighting Company logo, now Kenya Power, before heading to his home. Shabab Estate, an affluent cosmopolitan estate at the time, was where the daring robbery was to be staged. When case files first met Joseph Charles Kinyu, a convict on a capital offense of robbery with violence at the time, he said they were just young, happy-go-lucky men. On a Wednesday, that was 20th July, there was a blackout in the entire town, no electricity. So we decided to take advantage of that because now everybody had known that there was no electricity. So to gain access to where we wanted to go and commit the robbery. We posed as if we were workers of the KPL Limited. We were dressed in some overalls. Then we had one of us who was like a supervisor for us to gain a very easy access to the residence where we were going. So we prepared ourselves and when we went to that place, in fact, we did gain access very easily. Joseph was adorning a green overall, while the rest of the gang members was wearing blue ones. The house servant, Francis Otino, satisfied that the four were Kenya Power Company, employees formerly Kenya Power Lighting Company, hushed them in into the compound. The gang had figured that it was only employees from Kenya Power and Lighting Company and those from the Water Services Department who were able to gain easy access to residential areas without raising any suspicion. The four had solicited the services of a tailor in Akuru town who designed the Kenya Power overalls. On the first week of July 1988, the four pulled out outside the house of the Asian family. The wife of the businessman did not suspect that something was amiss, nor did the houseboy and a relative. The four descended on Rina Shah and a relative with machetes, slashing them and leaving them for the dead. The gang then went ahead and stole household goods, including expensive jewelry, before fleeing the scene of the robbery. 
By the time the family of Chandra Khan was returning home, the wife had lost a lot of blood. Efforts to save her life failed. She died while being admitted at a local hospital in Nakuru town. Police investigators had a murder in their hands. They had no idea who had attacked the family of the local businessman. Under pressure from the government, they go down to work. Coincidentally, the gang made one simple mistake. While fleeing the scene of the crime, one gang member left behind an envelope that contained a letter addressed to him. The letter was addressed to Paul Kamonjoroge. The letter was from a former classmate from a local school in Nakuru town. Armed with a letter and mailing address, the next step for the police officers was the school. The one who was like our supervisor by then, in fact, he was the ringleader, had a personal file. And in this personal file, uh, there were some documents in it. One of the documents in the file was a letter that had been written to him by a former schoolmate. And by then, uh, this former schoolmate was working. So, during that kind of commotion, when we left, the file was left there. And that is exactly what led the police who were investigating the case to arrest us. So, he was the first to be arrested. Trusting the person who had sent him the letter was easy. Paul Kamau Njoroge became the first suspect to be arrested. A necklace belonging to the wife who was killed was recovered from the house. Charles Joseph Kinyo was arrested in Langalanga Estate, but police failed to recover any of the stolen items from his house. James Kinyo was also arrested. The prosecution called several witnesses, among them the house servant. Francis Otieno painted a picture of a bloodletting that would later claim the life of the woman of the house. After several years on trial, James Kinyanjui and Paul Kamau Njoroge were found guilty of voluntarily robbing their victims and sent to the gallows. John Mashari Kamau, who had sued trial for the violent robbery, died while in prison. I really regret because for one, it wasn't a good act anyway. And nobody, I believe that nobody would support such an act. Not even any member of my family. Not even I myself. Because it wasn't good during that time. But it just happened. When case files spoke to Charles at committing maximum security prison at the time, the man who had done 24 years behind bars at the time, making him among the youngest prisoners to be jailed for more than two decades, had now turned into a preacher. At the time, the parents told case files they had made several trips to commit maximum prison and a Vasha correctional facility where the young Charles Kinyo was being held. The rest of his fellow gang members had by this time died. <laughs> If it wasn't for a letter addressed to one of the gang members from a friend, the four men posing as Kenya Power and Lighting Company employees will have pulled off a crime they believed was concealed nicely. We are taking a short break.